you go back to the start of the chapter, what does it say? Okay, Jesus, as you can see here, is sat by the seaside and he basically enters a, a ship, enters a boat and sits down in the boat and the people are standing on the shore. Okay, you can see that in those two verses and he starts speaking to them in parables. Now, um, understand that, but the people there are Jewish. Okay, he, he's, he's talking, teaching to a Jewish audience. He was the Messiah that would come, that was promised, that was prophesied about hundreds of years ago by pretty much every single prophet, every single person that wrote something in the Old Testament inspired by the Holy Spirit mentioned or referred to Jesus directly or indirectly in one way, shape or form at least. Okay, Now, the audience is Jewish. That's the first thing we need to understand. There were no Christians in the audience. You need to understand that as a genuine, authentic Bible student. Okay, You can't look at the scriptures and put your Christian lens on, lenses on in that regard. Okay, And just try and change the context of what he's basically doing. Now, we have this just probably habitually because we're Christians. We read the scriptures and we're reading it from a Christian perspective from, with Christian lenses on. Oh, okay, we're Christians. Um, we're saved by Christ. This is our Lord and Savior, and he's saying certain things. So he's talking to Christians. Well, he wasn't talking to Christians. Okay, Christians was a Christian was something that was talked about first in Antioch in the book of Acts. Okay. But he's talking to Jewish people. So you have to bear that in mind and um don't get don't get caught up in certain things that are said. I remember um years ago, okay, listening to Chuck Missler and one thing he said is he always used to say whenever you're reading through the New Testament and like the the religious leaders, the authorities, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, all those different people, whenever they do something crazy, like they're ready to stone him or they're supposed to be doing something, hone in on those particular points because there's something that maybe you don't understand or looking at it from a Christian lens, you don't perceive. But if you look at it, if you just literally switch switch the, the position and you look at it from the audiences who it actually was, you'll understand what was going on, why they started reacting a certain way, why they did certain things. And this comes back to having your key understanding of the Old Testament. I say this all the time, and in a lot of our videos, I talk about Old Testament and New Testament synergy because I love finding that and seeing that in my own Bible study. And it's something that will help you understand the scriptures as you, you become a better student of the word because you'll start to see... This thing in the New Testament makes so much more sense now because I understand this thing in the Old Testament. And it works vice versa as well. The reason I guess I don't spend as much time talking about New Testament in the Old Testament is because most people focus on the New Testament. Most people have a better understanding of the New Testament than the Old Testament. But it's a balanced diet. Okay, You should have a good understanding of both because the New Testament will outline and make things clear that wasn't necessarily clear in the Old Testament and the Old Testament will make certain things clear in the New Testament that won't be clear without understanding the Old Testament. That's why it's a collection, it's a pack. Okay, We may not be under the Old Covenant anymore, we may be under the New Covenant, but it doesn't mean those things aren't important, those things aren't significant.